Hello guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to model an ideal friendship ring in SOLIDWORKS. And so, to just jump right into it, uh, when you first open SOLIDWORKS, you're going to probably be introduced to it with this new SOLIDWORKS document window. And so what we're going to want to do is choose Part, which is already pre-selected, and click OK. OK, so here is your uh, workspace, and what we're going to want to do is we're going to choose Sketch, and we're going to want to choose the top plane. And so here you'll see two red arrows, one at uh, one heading straight up and one heading to the right. And if you hover over their intersection, you're going to see the origin highlights. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose to sketch a circle. And you're just going to hover over the origin and just draw an arbitrary circle. And now here in the parameters, we want to define how wide the circle will be. This parameter over here, as you can see, is radius. And so before this video, I measured the width of my finger and found it to be 0.75 inches wide. And so the radius is half of the diameter, so half of 0.75 is 0 0.375 inches. So we're just going to type that in and press enter and you can see that the circle automatically resizes. And zooming in with my scroll wheel here, you can see we have a circle. Now just to make things clearer in our diagrams, we're going to want to smart dimension this circle. So we're just going to to click Smart Dimension and click on the edge of the circle. And we're going to just define at 0.75 inches, which it's automatically defined. So now, we're going to want to stop the Smart Dimension. And while we're still in this sketch, we're going to want to choose to offset entities. And what this is going to do is we're going to basically make the outer ring of the ring. So we're going to click Offset Entities, and we're going to choose the inner circle. And you can see it defaults to 0 0.10 inches. We're going to want to do 0.125 inches, I think. And this, once we click our check mark, again, will be our ring. And you can see it automatically defines it here as the uh, difference between the diameters of the two circles. is 0.125, but the dimension shows 0.13. And so here we have the basis of our ring. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to stop or exit this sketch by clicking the same button we did earlier. And you'll see we just have the rings, uh, or the circles not highlighted anymore. And what we're going to want to do is we're going to go into view orientation in this top mini floating toolbar. And we're going to want to choose basically the home orientation. And that here is isometric. And you'll see from basically a northeastern view of your ring. And so we're going to want to make this 3D, right? So we're going to go into features and we're going to choose extruded boss slash base. And once you do this, you can see it automatically detects the ring that you've made. And you're going to want to, just for preference, this can be whatever size you want it. I'm going to do, oh, let's say quarter inch for a ring. And so here we have our ring. Looks pretty pretty dull once we click the check mark, right? Yeah, nothing nothing too grand. So we're going to want to go back into our isometric view here. And after this, we want to add some some features to the ring, right? And so here we're going to want to choose to fillet the ring and what a fillet does is it basically rounds out these edges. So we're going to choose fillet and we're going to choose all these four edges. And you can do these either individually or all at once like I am over here. And you can see it highlights each edge, edge one, two, three, four. And we're going to want to choose a partial preview. And let's do, oh, let's say a 0 0.05 inch fillet. And click check mark. And you saw that earlier it should have come up even earlier than that, that we have a rounded ring now. This looks pretty cool. So now we have the basis of our ring, and this is basically all you need if you want to begin uh, like 3D printing it or something. But if you just want to model it, uh, we can also add some textures to it. So we're going to, in this left panel, we're going to want to choose material and right click it. 
we're going to choose Edit Material. And you'll see this new dialog box pop up. I'm thinking of a nice wood ring, so we're going to go into Woods, and I'm going to choose Mahogany. We're going to apply it, close this, and you can see that it has a color similar to Mahogany. Here you'll want to select Edit Appearance. So now this is the mahogany material appearance, and you can choose whatever you want from out of here. Uh, heck, we can choose birch and have polished birch, or cherry and have polished cherry, or end grain, and we can have mahogany. So we're going to go with uh, unfinished mahogany, and here's our ring. Note that if you wanted to save this file to 3D print or something like that, you can go to File, Save As, and then choose from the drop-down box of many different formats. There are those such as STL, which are used for 3D printing, and DXF that are used for 2D applications. But if you wanted to 3D print this, I'd go with STL. Thank you for watching.